My name's Ray Ives and I'm 75 years old. The first memory is ship movement, feeling seasick, being very young and very inexperienced. Commercially, I've been diving since 1965 for a living. I've got a lot of china, um, clay pipes, bottles, clay bottles, jars, propellers, portholes, swords, um, guns, uh, ammunition boxes, the old type made of teak, still with the empty shells in, um, bayonets. Anything that people threw, didn't want, they threw over the side because there was no means of getting it back and nobody could find it. Well, my collection of artifacts and helmets and things, most of it came from Plymouth, but a lot of things like Dartmouth, um, Brixham, Torquay, um, the wrecks off Dover, plates up in Scotland as well, came from all over really. Well, the sea's the biggest rubbish dump in the world, I think. Well, I have a rapier sword in my collection, which I found up in a river in fresh water up near Biddeford, and it's engraved in Latin, and uh, I think it dates something between. 17th, 18th century. I've got silver coins from the Association and pillar dollars from the Alandia. Everybody wants gold and a mermaid. Oh, I would say I would be a very good pirate and a scrannier. When I left the dockyard from a salvage boat in the dockyard, I joined one of the biggest salvage firms in the country at the time. And they used to go around salvaging all the ships, any accidents, ships on the bottom, anything like that. And if there was treasure, they would try and go for it, even in deep water with a grab and that. But when they discovered oil in the early 1970s, the main thing then was to get all the oil ashore as quick as possible to try and get some money back from all the money they'd spent. So safety wasn't a priority in them days. So we were working flat out, six, seven weeks, eight weeks at a time and getting a, probably a week off and then going back out there trying to get the oil back to England. My boat Nibbit, it's 21 foot long and it's like a fat lady really, sits well in the water. It's accessible so we can go diving in it or I can go fishing in it or I can take young ladies out in it and we can go and have a look round and have a couple of beers. different types of diving. There's air diving, skin diving, and then you eventually finish up as a first class professional saturation diving where you spend maybe a month under, under pressure and half that month is spent in the water.
People come from all over the country to Plymouth to dive. It's one of the best diving resorts because of obviously all the wrecks and the access to the water and things like that. For someone who's never dived, I couldn't explain really. Well, it's like when you're on the moon, I suppose. I've never been on the moon, but when you're down on the bottom, it's sandy like the moon. You feel pressure on your body, especially the deeper you go. And I guess it just reminds you of space. If you hold your breath, it's absolutely perfect. If you get means of lifting the silt and sand from wherever you're, you're looking and you come across something that's shiny, a quiver goes through you and your hair stands up, hoping it's going to be gold. But very often it's not. Well, if you're on your last bar of air and you thought you'd found something that was really valuable, you'd go right down to the last breath and still be trying to grab it as you went to the surface. Obviously not working now as a diver, I can see more, which I never saw before, because now you can go down when you're doing it for fun and you can see everything. the marine growth and the sea fern and the plimrosia, red, pink and white, it's like being in a bluebell wood really. It's absolutely wonderful. quite adventurous really because I've, I've worked and traveled all over the world and I've earned enough money to settle down and have an ice cream once a week and a pint of beer. Climb in and climb out. I'm going to carry on doing it. Well, probably when I'm 80, I'll stop. And then I'll take up real diving then. <laughs> Which is done in a pub. <laughs>